Okay, so now we understand what it means to have openness in the financial market. So now we need to talk about the implications or effectively which assets to hold. Okay, now we can buy assets from all over the world. So which asset to hold? An easy answer might be uh, the asset with highest interest payment. That's the easy answer, right? So in Bangladesh, you can earn 5%. In India, you can earn 7%. So you should invest in India. Uh, but it's really not that easy. Things are a bit more complicated than that. Uh, let me explain this. So suppose you can invest $1 in Bangladesh and one year later, that's going to pay you a one plus IT, right? Where IT is the one year interest rate in Bangladesh. You could take the same $1 and you could uh, invest it in another country. Let's say you may invest it in India. So first, what do you have to do? You have to convert this into Indian currency. Then You have to convert it into dollar. So what do you do? One dollar times the exchange rate. So suppose that's E, okay? One times E is E. If you hold this for one year, what will you get? Dollar E one plus IT star, where IT star is the one year interest rate in I don't know why I'm using dollar since I'm talking about Bangladesh and India. Uh, so Taka, Taka. Taka. So here's what we have. If we take one Taka and hold it in Bangladesh, at the end of the year, we are going to earn one plus IT. If we take one taka, convert it into the Indian currency, uh, which is effectively one taka times the exchange rate, and then hold it for one year, we are going to earn this much. E times one plus the interest rate in that country. But that's not the end of it. Once you've earned this, We've earned this in rupee, right? So you have to convert this back into taka. How will you do that? Uh, you will effectively have uh, E one plus I T star divided by uh, E. P plus one expectation. You don't know what the exchange rate will be next year in period T plus one. As a result, you have an expected exchange rate of, of this much. Now, what needs to happen is that uh, you write this down. Return from investment in BD gives you for each dollar you invest you earn this much and return from investment in India for each dollar each taka that you invest you are going to earn uh, where did it go one plus it is star times et divided by et plus one right so now which one will you invest in 
you're going to invest in whichever gives you more. So if it's a case of this being higher than If this is the case, then you will invest in Bangladesh. And if the opposite is true, if this is the case, then you will invest in India, right? I mean, of course, there are a few things to keep in mind. Uh, one is risk. Now, we have assumed that there is no risk of investing in India or in Bangladesh. Uh, of course, different stocks, different assets have different levels of risk. Uh, so that will factor into it as well. But we are ignoring risk for the time being. And the second is transaction cost. So once again, if you want to invest in Bangladesh, there's some cost involved. If you want to invest in India, there's also some cost involved and they may not be equal. So depending on which country has the higher transaction cost, you know, that's going to factor into it as well. So we are ignoring this too for the time being and just assuming that this is all that matters. Okay, so this all that we see from here is that Let's focus on this interest and this interest. Uh, if all things equal, if interest rate in India goes up, you'll be more likely to invest in India. And uh, if interest rate in Bangladesh goes up, you're more likely to invest in Bangladesh. That's the interpretation with interest rate. And if we look at this too, this and this, of course, this is exchange rate in this period in the numerator and exchange rate in the next period in the denominator. So what that means is that if we expect uh, Taka to appreciate, then we are more likely to invest in Bangladesh. And if we expect Taka to depreciate, we are more likely to invest in India. So make sure these two are clear to you. I'll just write it down. If uh, we expect I to increase above I star, we will invest domestically, vice versa, obviously. And the second of all, if we expect the, the domestic currency, to appreciate we will invest domestically of course vice versa okay and another important thing is that it's unlikely that we will see a scenario like this okay uh, if one country is paying more interest, money will flood into that country until all investing opportunities are extinguished, inter interest rate goes down until this becomes equal. To. So it's unlikely that a parity will exist between two countries. Uh, so usually what we are going to see is a scenario where I plus IT is equal uh, to i plus it star times et divided by et plus one expectation. This 
is going to be a very important formula going forward in this course. This is called interest parity condition. By parity, we mean this, this, the fact that it's equal. This is very important. But just think about the alternate cases, okay? Uh, if uh, we have this, that would mean all the money will flood into Bangladesh and investment opportunities will be extinguished. At the same time, all the money will flow out of India and you guys can do your analysis, your market analysis of what happens when there is an increase in demand or decrease in demand. We've done this in ECO 102 and 207. So what happens when there is an increase in loanable fund, when there is a decrease in loanable fund, and what happens to the interest rates in those countries? And what you will see is that if we have a scenario where either one of these persists, there is very quickly going to be a readjustment of funds that are available. It's going to go up, go down, whatever. And we are very quickly going to end up in a scenario where they're equal. And that's why it's called interest parity condition. And a lot of analysis that we do going forward is going to need this assumption that interest parity condition holds, that this equality holds. So it's important that you guys understand this, not only understand this equation, but understand its implications, which are 